Hi, I'm Chuck, KK6USY for Ham Radio Ventures. Have you ever wanted to deploy your 17-foot uh, extendable antenna? But we're sure exactly how to put it up fast and easy. Stick with me, I'm going to show you how I do it. It may not be the only way. If you have a different way, put it down in the comments. Let's check it out. Okay, I recently did a video on why would I want to put a Parks on the Air or Soda Summits on the Air. And in that video, I mentioned that I one of my favorite go-to quick antennas was the 17-foot uh, extendable stainless steel mat, or antenna, uh, whip, whatever, whatever you want to call it. And I got about three or four emails, I forget exactly how many, about how I actually deploy it, because I didn't really talk about how I deploy it. I've done it in other videos, but I've really never actually sat down and showed people how to do it. So today we're going to uh, look at some parts that I use and I like to use something heavy duty because I, I've messed around with with light stuff in my projects over the years and found out that that doesn't always end up working. So today I'll show you how to do it for under $20 and the only other thing you're going to need is the 17 foot extendable whip. So let's check that out and I'll show you what I like to do. Okay this is the uh, mirror bracket that I ordered. I will put a link in the um, description below for this also off of Amazon and I am an affiliate so I it does help the channel if you buy it from there so this is a just a regular old mirror mount here's all the parts that come with it now they do make these where both sides look like this side because we're going to switch it this direction and flip this sideways. I, I prefer this style myself uh, because otherwise the this otherwise this groove is going the wrong way. It doesn't really matter. It'll still work, but I prefer this style. It's up to you what you want to get. Nice solid aluminum. Now I've I've done uh, <laughs> I've done things in the past, building trailers and stuff like that, and I you know skimped on the metal that went on it. So I'm not going to skimp on this because this this 17 foot uh, whip is actually. It's pretty heavy. So it comes with this. Here's your uh, coax connection. There. Okay, that screws in from the bottom of this. So this will go up like this. Now this is a spacer here. Um, you, you have to separate the antenna from the ground. So this goes in here. It's hard to see, but there's a little groove right here. Maybe you can see that. Yeah, kind of. Let's see how close I can get it. There you go. And that fits in this hole and that centers it. Okay. And that keeps this one, keeps the bottom one from touching the sides. You just have to make sure everything's lined up right when you get it tight. So I'll, I'll hand tighten this right now. And then I'll make sure that's centered. It just dropped in. And I forgot the washer, but I'll put that on. And that probably should go on the bottom side. But I'll put that on before I build it. Okay. Now these bolts here, I'm probably going to turn them the other way. Let me just take them off. So that's going to have to turn. We're going to turn it this way. All right. And I'm going to put those through the other way. Just, just so they're out of the way here. Sorry for the glare there, guys. So that's going to go like that, and then our stake is going to go up and down. And we're going to put this really kind of close to the top. I've already prepared the stake. I, uh, I'll show you what I did to that in a minute. Let me go ahead and put these nuts and washers back on here. So this has locking washers. Oop. Okay, let me let that one out just a little bit. All right, let me show you the the uh, stake. Now this stake is, uh, I won't be able to get it all on. It. Well, actually, yeah, I could turn it just right. Look at that. Now what I did here is I drilled a hole through here and I got a tap for a, a quarter 20. Pretty common size for most things, uh, even for ham radio. And then at the end out here, let me pull this out of here. Shouldn't have put it all the way in. 
this is uh 3 8 24 thread at the end i drilled this i probably should have put my glasses on i uh i need reader sometimes but uh let me see if i can show this to you but there's the i drilled a hole let's see if we get the focus so there you go oh there you go and so i drilled that tapped it 3 8 24 which is super common for ham radio and cb that's what the uh, threads on this were also 3 8 24 that's the threads on the uh the antennas so what's going to happen is this is going to go hopefully yeah of course let me listen up just a little bit And I'll tighten all this stuff up later, but that's going to go like that. And I'll probably, I don't know, I don't, I'm not really going to probably use the wing nut because what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two wires with power poles on them. I might even put a double power pole on one side and these are going to go, they're going to be about 10 inches and that'll get me, so you're going to put six to eight, you're going to put six to eight inches in the ground. Okay. And then that'll put that right down to the ground for your ground radials because you're gonna need ground radials with this uh, basically your quarter wave vertical is what this is so that's this will screw on there oh, about right there and uh, or tighten it up I should say and uh, I just don't, I want to I want to be a little farther away from that so when you do hit it but what I'm gonna have to be really careful with this is use a rubber mallet use something on top of it or, or put this bolt in here, okay, um, to hit it with a hammer, if I have to hit it with a hammer. In my house, when I, when I do the uh, outside part, I can push the grounds. It just rained here not too long ago, and the ground's pretty soft, and my yard's really good dirt, so. But I'll, I'll tighten all this stuff up, and I will show you the uh, the wire. All right, so here's the, uh, the stake. There's the wires, how they're hooked on. I probably would put them on both sides instead of one on each side instead. Uh, the wires are just a little bit long. There's the power poles. Okay, so let's just let push this in the ground. Okay, so I just took these wires off of a uh, another pole that I had for now. But basically all you're gonna do is take your roll of wires. So you throw your wires out and then you just plug them in like that. All right, now the Chameleon is designed to go onto the pole in the hole that I drilled at the top like that. Now, if you do ham sticks, I kind of I kind of set it like it uh, the ham sticks went in that hole, but they don't. They would go in this hole just like the Wolf River coil would. Okay, and then on top of that, you could put this. Uh, I probably wouldn't put this this one on top of here, 17 footer, because it's just a little bit long. Um, It'll work, but I would probably just use like a 102 inch whip that I have. Not as portable though as this. If I was doing portable, I'd take the 17 footer. Now I've been using different types of things. Let me show you. Okay, so on the on the wire, I'm gonna use something like this for the two wires to hook them to the bolt here. And I won't have to take that off again, really. So, and if I do, I usually carry some kind of, a, of tools in my in my truck, so. And in my, when I take my backpack, I usually have some kind of a tool that I can get stuff like this loose. So that's that's what I'll use for the, the two wires that come off here. And I use a, I think 14 gauge, 12 or 14 gauge for that, just because I want something that's gonna last. I've, I've used um, the, uh, a different wire before for the uh, <laughs> for these, and it just wasn't strong enough and I ended up replacing them. And I used to use, I used, I used to use something like this with both ends and they work there's nothing wrong with those the uh sometimes they're hard to get apart uh sometimes some of them lock and the power poles are a lot easier to get apart unfortunately the for me the power poles are a little too easy to pull apart sometimes but uh, they work pretty good so I'll, I'll i'll use power poles instead of this but i will probably use that now for radios i usually use uh uh five to six in a, in a bundle and usually 12 to 15 feet anywhere from 10 to 15 feet for a wire i use this this is uh it's a speaker cable 
This is what they call it, 22 gauge. It's aluminum copper clad is what they call it. And I like this stuff because it's it's lighter. If you do take it out packed, if you pack it someplace, it's, uh, and it works just fine. The, the, the radial part doesn't matter. You don't need great wire for that. But this stuff here, and I'll put, um, I'll put this in a, uh, in the description below also, and a thousand feet, it says a thousand feet, so that's 2,000 feet because you get two wires. So if you buy 500, you have a thousand feet. Okay, so here's, uh, this is the Chameleon, 17 foot, all right. I, I, I do believe this, the quality of this is just a little bit better, not, not a whole lot. And then this, this is the MFJ version. They both work just, just fine. I will probably set up the MFJ because I already have it marked. Eh, maybe not. Maybe we'll set the other one up and mark it. What I do do is uh, I uh, set these at home and I will set up my radials. I will adjust it to uh, all the different bands and then take a black marker and mark it. And that lasts for quite a while. And then when I get to the field and I should write which band it is and I probably will this time. And when I get to the field, usually that's pretty close depending on you know, the difference in the ground itself, okay? So it works pretty good, and it's pretty fast that way. And that way, if you wanna change bands while you're out, it uh, it's pretty fast to change them. So I, I almost forgot to tell you guys, um, this is the this is all set up now, tightened down. But I, I forgot to tell you about this right here. These The reason I put, uh, here we go again. But the reason I put this, uh, reason I put this hole in there is if you have a ham stick or maybe an impasse and I'm going to show you the impasse because it's uh, it's short and it's easy to do ham sticks are a little bit longer but uh, they will just screw into the end of this now because it's 3 8 24 which is what the chameleon uh, impasse uses okay maybe. So that goes on there. Now the reason I don't just screw this into the uh, the mirror mount, if you, you might be asking that, well, this one needs to be grounded because the uh, the coax connection on this one is separate from the ground. All right. So then you put your 17 footer in here, or or they have uh, the delta loop, whatever you want to do. This will hold it all, believe me. Um, now. You could use this. If you take this washer out of here, you can use this. All right, same thing, but by threading it, now I don't have to, t inherently when I do something like take this washer out, then I end up losing it or forgetting where I put it. So I wanted to stay, and that's the reason that I uh, went ahead and threaded the end of this. So it, it does two purposes. I've already got one that does for just this, but uh, now I take one. I, I can take one stake with me. All right, so. Now we will get out there to the field and check this stuff out. I think you guys will like it. All right. All right, so now this is on here, it's pretty sturdy. And what we're gonna do is just pull these things up. I usually pull them all the way up for each one. Okay, that's 17 foot. That thing's pretty sturdy. It ain't going nowhere. Okay, let me show the other ones to you. Let me put this back. And then later we'll tune this one. Um, we'll see how many bands we can get with it. I'll put the ham stick on first. And, and what I like about the Hustlers is the coil is up higher and it's in the kind of in the middle of the antenna. I think it works this a little better. It's not a huge difference, but I, I like them better. So there now, that's on there. It's not going anywhere. Most of the movement is the actual antenna itself, okay? So here's the Hustler. I made this pole, basically it's what you can buy. I just happen to have the, the copper laying around. It's actually beefier. And uh, it's a pretty heavy antenna, because you got weight up here. Okay, and that's in there, and that's not going anywhere either. And that should work pretty good, really. Okay, so I'm using my 
DJI uh, Osmo action to look at the actual SWR and right now it's 1.35 so I'm probably not going to mess with it but we will just anyhow so 33 three. up oh. so actually we were this is probably as good as we're going to get it right there one point let's see 1.36 that's plenty good enough so let's go change it to uh, somewhere in the uh, 17 meter band so 2.5 we're probably long so I'll take the bottom section I'm going to move it down a little bit 2.3 2.1, 2.0. So I'm one whole section down. I'm 1.7. 1.5. 1.6. 1.7. 1.8. 1.9. 1.10. 1.11. 1.12. 1.13. 1.14. 1.15. 1.16. 1.17. 1.18. 1.19. 1.20. 1.21. 1.22. 1.23. 
This is Chuck, KK6 US Wife for Ham Radio Adventures. Uh, be safe, 73 all, and I hope to catch you on the airwaves.